Here we're gonna look at a nice number puzzle. And this is one of those things that seems kind of impossible or unlikely at first, but after you know the trick, you really can't unsee the trick. And then it's very clearly simplifiable in this case. So our goal is to evaluate the following finite sum. So we start with one over one plus the square root of three, plus one over the square root of three plus the square root of five plus dot, 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 all the way up to these last two terms, which are one over the square root of 117 plus the square root of 119 plus one over the square root of 119 plus 11. And before we get started, I wanna notice that these first and last terms are not outliers because indeed one is the same thing as the square root of one and 11 is the same thing as the square root of 121. So indeed we do follow a pattern here where we're looking at the reciprocal of the sum of the square roots of two consecutive odd numbers where we have overlap from one term to the other. Okay, so in order to get started, I'm gonna rewrite this using summation notation. That'll allow the simplification to happen kind of all at once, and it'll be a little less hand wavy. So our first term is one. So we could write that as maybe two n minus one, where n is equal to one. So here we have the sum as n goes from one up to well, let's see, if we want this to be of the form two n plus one, then that means we need n to be equal to 60. So we have the sum as n goes from one to 60 of one over the square root of two n minus one plus the square root of two n plus one. Let's just make sure that that makes sense. So if n equals one, we get one plus the square root of three. So that's our first term. If n equals two, we get the square root of three plus the square root of five. So that's our second term. And then furthermore, you can check that these last two terms correspond to n equals 59 and n equals 60. So we're good to go here. Okay, so what's our next step? Well, we'd probably like to rationalize the denominator. Maybe that'll help us combine these together into one object. So we can rationalize the denominator by multiplying by the radical conjugate. In this case, and in this case, I'll multiply by the square root of two n plus one minus the square root of two n minus one. And that's gonna occur both in the numerator and in the denominator. And I'm doing it in this order rather than the other order, just so that I have the largest one first and I don't have to worry about some sort of trailing minus sign. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. So here we've got like a difference of squares type thing once we were to multiply this out. If we think about this as like A, this is like B, then we have A and B here, and we can use the simplification that A minus B times A plus B is equal to A squared minus B squared. And in this case, A squared minus B squared will be the number two. So that's pretty nice. So that leaves us with the sum as n goes from one up to 60 of the square root of two n plus one minus the square root of two n minus one all over two. Okay, so that's good. Then we've got a finite sum. So that means I can break this apart into two sums without too much worry. So I'll do that while factoring a one half out of the entire thing. So that'll give me a half. Then I'll have the sum as n goes from one up to 60 of the square root of two n plus one minus the sum as n goes from one up to 60 of the square root of two n minus one. Next up, I'm going to take the n equals one term out of this first sum and the n equals 60 term out of this second sum. I guess it's the second sum and the first sum. That'll allow me to re-index these back into each other. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. We'll have a half, and then we'll have the n equals 60 term will be the square root of 121 or 11, and then we're left with plus 
this sum as n goes from 1 up to 59 now of the square root of 2n plus 1 minus the sum as n goes from 2 up to 60 of the square root of 2n minus 1 and then minus the n equals 1 term. So let's notice that the n equals 1 term is just 1. So we're left with something like this. Next up, we can combine these two numbers, 11 and 1. Well, it's negative 1, and that'll give us 10. And then we can re-index one of these. So let's maybe re-index this guy by sending n to n plus 1. So in other words, we'll replace all of the n's with n plus 1's. But that's going to change this 2n minus 1 to 2n plus 1. And then furthermore, when n plus 1 is 2, n is equal to 1. And when n plus 1 is 60, n is equal to 59. So that's going to change this into 2n plus 1 here, a 1 here, and then a 59 here. But now that's exactly what we have for this first sum. So that makes those two cancel. Then we're left with 1 half times 11 minus 1, or 1 half times 10, or the number 5. So in the end, this thing that started out looking like a crazy sum, which would not be simplifiable, is in fact just the number 5. And that's a good place to stop.